Today in the news, we got AMD and their Ryzen 7000 APUs and a mod that replaces DLSS with FSR. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. A little earlier in the year, AMD unveiled something that I was particularly interested in, a slide that talks about their next generation of laptop chips. Now, of course, the reason why I'm so interested in mobile chips is because they usually find their way onto the desktop market, eventually under the G series of APUs. Going back, the information that we got was pretty scarce, but it definitely gave us an idea of what AMD was planning on doing. Instead of having a single chip manufactured and binned for all of the laptops, that's what they're currently doing, AMD would now split it into two different chips for two different product segments. First, there's the codename Phoenix chip. This one is for thin and light laptops. It's a Zen 4 chip with support for PCIe Gen 5 and LPDDR5. Since it's for slim laptops, it's relatively low power at 35 to 45 watts CTDP. So that's the info that we had. Now though, leaker Paul from uh, Red Gaming Tech received some uh, insights from his sources about this specific CPU lineup. So Phoenix would apparently be built for balance, great CPU and great GPU. So you get the same amount of cores as we've seen on mobile chips, eight, and the same amount of uh, compute units as the last generation of mobile chips. So that's 12 compute units. Uh, but the difference here is of course the generational changes like Zen 4 for the uh, CPU architecture and RDX a 3 for the graphics. The graphics chip here seems very promising, with Paul approximating about 9.2 teraflops of compute power. To give you an example, this is just under an RX 5700 XT or RX 6600 XT in terms of compute power. Now, of course, teraflops aren't everything, but having that kind of power in a thin and light laptop that is less than two centimeter thick, that's kind of nice. This Phoenix chip could actually have a chiplet design to achieve this, though Red Gaming Tech does say that his confidence that this would be true is pretty low. Still, he gave us a mock-up of what it could look like, and here it is. A Zen 4 CPU chiplet with I.O., a separate GPU chiplet, and some cache on the side. It's going to be interesting to see how this would perform and work, since one of the main bottlenecks of an APU is the shared memory. So far, no APUs have had Infinity Cache, and this looks like it's a dedicated cache chiplet for graphics. Once again though, low confidence on that leak. Hey, Editing Snows here, and I just remembered that AMD themselves said that Phoenix Point would definitely be a chiplet architecture. I'm guessing that his low confidence here on the leak is specifically for the cache attached to the whole package. Back to me. Moving to Dragon Range, this would almost be like a desktop chip on Zen 4. He says that we're looking at 16 cores on the high end, which is basically what AMD was implying. Look here on this slide, it says highest core slash thread and cache ever for a mobile gaming CPU. Now with Intel currently at 16 cores, but 24 threads, AMD would beat it by eight threads with a 16 core 32 thread CPU. And of course, AMD has a lot more cache than Intel CPUs. Now, like I said earlier, my personal interest in this is desktop APUs. So which one of this is going to desktop? Well, it wouldn't make sense to put Dragon Range as an APU since it really only has two compute units. It's the same amount that we expect already from desktop Ryzen 7000 chips. So ideally, it would be Phoenix. But since this is now a chiplet design and could push things further on the desktop market, we could see things like more of these memory complex dies or a higher CU count for the uh, integrated graphics. It would pretty much be modular at this point. But anyways, I'm pretty sure that uh, AMD will stick to the the basics for this generation, but it does make the future pretty bright in terms of the uh, chiplet modularity. What do you guys think about this? Let me know down below. Also in AMD news, I kind of missed it last week, but we got some updates on it. FSR 2.0 is in the news. Now as is FSR 2, it launched with Deathloop and AMD has been working with devs to add support to more games, but many of them aren't out yet. Now though, AMD finally made the technology completely open source under the MIT license. So be ready for a flurry of new games that pop up with the technology. For example, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands just got updated to 
support it. Not just that, but FSR2 now has a plugin on Unreal Engine 4 and 5. So once again, a lot more games are gonna have it supported in the near future. There's also a modder that is working currently on a uh, mod that removes DLSS in games that support it and swaps it out for FSR 2.0. Pretty impressive. That's because both technologies need about the same data set. He tested his mod in Cyberpunk 2077 and it doubled his frame rate instantly with its GTX 1080. And obviously he did that because, well, the 1080 doesn't support DLSS. That's pretty neat. I'll see if I can take a crack at it and make it work in other games. Let me know if you want to see a video about this down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.